Exactly. Yeah, I get the really small gray wood screws for this one. So heavy all this stuff. Yeah. Now get the uh, really small wood screws again, four of them for the last thing. There you go. Move. Hmm? You kicked it. <laughs> you fucking kicked it. <laughs> you got it all fucking good. Hey man, shit rolls yeah. downhill. <laughs> So now that we know where everything is going, we got to take it all back off and paint the wood so that it doesn't rot. Cool. We got brought some paint. Yeah. <laughs> switch needs to be wired in to uh, there yep so the wire is going to go uh, through here and it only needs to be about this long so we'll cut it a little so you got the cutters wire cutters out there 
they're on, I think that they are, they're in that, they're on top of the slim line. Case. Yep. I was like, come on, I just trying to remember what to call it. Sorry. I was like, just found them. <laughs> The sensor works the same, it's just I, it wasn't the one I was planning on using, so it's fine. I needed to not do this until I put it to the gland, though. See, I was just kidding. This is how you look it up. So, now that I've demonstrated for the camera and for you two how to tighten those on there, we're going to run it out of the way, up through the gland. trip over it. Kevin is a big fan of putting a strain relief knot in here so that if somebody does like tug on the wire it doesn't get pulled out. He is probably right. I just think that it looks ugly. Yeah, probably both right. Yeah. Well I'm right that it looks ugly. Yep. He's probably right that it saves like from damaging a PCB. Right? Uh, so we got that one. So now uh, the next thing we're gonna do is when you're setting these up Something that you have to remember is that uh, there is, look in here, there's a dip switch. Yep, three of them. See those three? Yeah. What do you think those control? Three dip switches. Look at the face. Put our plate on. So that's going to be. Bring it over here. Whatever the one, two, and three. Yeah, so there's lights on there that say one, two, and three, right? Yeah. So those are the inputs, the switches, the current, the sensors, right? Like a pressure switch, a flow switch, a integrated pressure switch, a uh, current, I said current switch, it could be a so photometer, it could be any sort of switch that can turn on and off, right? That's the number two? That's, what's that? Was that the number two one? One, two, and three. They're each one, they're each its own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've got a flow switch hooked up and we're going to hook up this current switch, but we're going to have number three is going to be empty, right? And so what the dip switch does is it turns off the light for, that. for it so that it doesn't illuminate because the, the software or the firmware uh, programming for it, I don't know the correct term, but the programming for it you can't disable any of these. So one is going to be our flow switch. Two is going to be our current switch for the pump. Three, I am jumpering. What can it be for? Uh, you could do a you could do a pressure switch. You could do uh, maybe a different current switch if you wanted to monitor. Say you had two pool pumps and you wanted to monitor them independently. Um, it would shut down if either one shut off. Oh, you that's, could that's do. Good. Uh, you know, you could do um, maybe, I don't know, I, 
whatever you whatever want. You, whatever you want. You don't want the chem, you don't want the chemical system to run at night. Put a photometer on it. When it gets dark, it shuts down the system. I don't, you know, I don't know why you want to do that. But yeah. The the main ones are flow switch, pressure switch, and current switch. Those are the main ones. But a customer might have some other use. You know, I mean, I keep saying we should market these to general industry, not just pools. There's plenty of process stuff that we can control. So and I like being in charge. Uh, so I put I I just put a wire between these two. Right. Temper it and stick it in there, and we're good. So now this one is going to get the current sensor, and so we've got to find uh, the pool. So the pumps for this. Let's see, the water's coming in from that pump. Oh, this one, the yep. small one. Yep, the small one, because it's just circulating a small amount of water in here, yep. and then those big pumps run the spray. So this just treats the water down in the pit, which is not very much. So you need that power. Um, so this power, and it's coming up, and so this is the switch for it. So uh, it's switched to off, but the handle isn't on. Now you, you can't open it when it's uh, there. So I'm gonna flip it to off. Okay. It's not quite a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Good turn. Lift the. Um, yeah, the I oh, need a flathead. Yeah. There we go. Nice. Almost. Almost. <laughs> more. There we go. Okay. Ooh, that's dangerous. Yes. Right. There. right. So, uh, there should be power coming into it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go over to our main panel and shut that off before we do anything. Ah, uh, shoot. I didn't bring my tester. Did you bring one? Uh, it's in my, it's in one of my boxes. One, two, three. So filter pump is the one down at the bottom. So we're going to flip it to off. It should only be 240 volts, uh, but it's three phase. So I got this thing. So this is yeah, a three phase. That's right. Yeah, so you have three hots in the ground, so four wires instead of three wires. You have the same voltage, but you have slightly less voltage. So you have 240 volts three phase. Instead of being uh, 180 degrees out of phase, no, yeah, 180 degrees out of phase or 120 degrees, or is it? There's 60 degrees out of phase instead of 90 degrees out of phase. I was trying to remember. Yeah. So the the power waves, okay, instead of the lines being uh, 90 degrees out of phase, they are 60 degrees out of phase, which means you get 208 volts in between any two wires. But when all three of them are hooked up, you have 240 volts. Hmm. Okay. So um, we're gonna check line one to line two. Voltage. Should have checked it on, probably. Well, I'm gonna show you all check. Then I'm gonna check line one to line three, line two, three. So I have no voltage between the lines. But that doesn't mean there's no voltage. It means that they're all the same. Here. They're the same, or uh, they're they're not, one of them is open and the other has voltage, right? So if there's, if there's nowhere for it to go, so I want to find my ground. Bottom. Yeah. I see the green wire. I see there is blood way down at the bottom. So I can come down here. Okay. Down at the bottom, and I am gonna grab my grounding lug. Okay. I'm on the grounding lug, and now I'm gonna test again. How does that work when your things are plugged in? <laughs> Dude, that's what's funny. <laughs> hey, you know, you might have just saved my fucking life. So I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna give you shit. I mean, I'm gonna 
That was just cool because I saw yeah, him reading the book. I was like, oh, that's a good one. Why are you judging me? You may just save my life. <laughs> I mean, legit though. I stick my hand in there, and there's voltage. Yeah, so right now I'm getting 0. 0.001 volts. Yeah, between them, I test it again. And the voltage. So between the lines, I'm dead. Which is good. Yeah. <laughs> Supervising you, teaching you something, yep. something like that, okay? Uh, because you could have these are not very powerful. If there was a short in here, it would scare the fuck out of us when I opened it. It would one of us would shit our pants. It would probably be me, okay? Uh, it would be very loud. It would be very bright, uh, and we would think that we had been injured, but our injuries would be more about us running away from it and tripping over shit and getting hurt than, than it, right? Because we're not touching it, so it's 240 volts. We have customers who have boxes that look exactly like this, that if it did the same thing, it would kill you, even though you don't touch it. Okay, so don't open them up. You don't know what condition they're in on the inside. This, this one isn't surprising. Well, don't Very you have to, to put that current uh, tester in there? Yeah, but you can de-energize it first, then open it. Then re-energize it to test. Got it. Right? Or you, you, you're right. So like, and that's why I'm saying like have Josiah. Like, like don't be like, oh, I wonder what's in there. Like it's not, not safe. Yeah. So this is the little wire switch, and this is the split core, like I was talking about. So this thing literally just pops open. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have a license to install these because we're only doing low voltage. We're gonna clip this over one of the hot wires going out. So we already identified this is the conduit going to the pool pump. Right? Yeah. And these are the three wires. They got them marked brown, orange, and yellow. Okay, and so I'm just gonna grab yellow and literally just slip this over it. Did you test the other one uh, back there? Which to one? make sure that I was reading uh, the current properly? Uh, what, what do you mean? Like uh, that was giving a positive? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yep. This one you can't. That's easy enough, right there. Yeah. Well, so how does that check the voltage? When electricity is passing through it, because this is, so it's basically like a little magnet in the dirt, right? Steel, uh, okay. and it's, it's, it can pick up the current, and it can tell there's electricity. So we stick it, there's a little spot, space for it in here. Um, they're a little tight in this space. Mm -hmm. A little bit. I think that's the wrong one. Right. But before I do any of that, I'm gonna to repurpose this cable so we don't use the wires that uh, Victor was so graciously kind enough to bring me. What personal money? You use personal money? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? Why? It's easy to actually just get a place to have an advocate, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thanks for the burgers. Too, it's too bad I wasn't too hungry today. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I need uh, your technician screwdriver. My, my flathead is too big. Uh, uh, it is, huh? Do you want the silicone? No, it's, I need a flathead. Got it. I need a flathead. Yeah. You got one? It was over there somewhere. Oh, it's in my pocket. <laughs> well, not yours, mine is in my pocket. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Is that down yours or mine? 
This one? Yeah. Uh, I got this one out of my truck. Okay. I just wonder if this is exactly like mine. No, you, can, you can go get another one. I think this is how I know it's mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were you chiseling concrete with it? Because I'm a really <laughs> strong technician. <laughs> I solved the hard problems. <laughs> it was a very rusty technical issue. <laughs> Did you open it? <laughs> so. Well, you can have mine anyway. Yep. You want. Now, I need uh, the drill and the drill bit again. I'm going to do another half inch drill bit here. So it's back there, but which drill bit? Yeah, what bit did you need? Uh, the bits we're doing a half inch tap. Would you? to drop the plastic right now. Yeah, well, it did. <laughs> I don't know about now. I won't play with those. Actually, <laughs> like, I don't use it, but... Did I give you the part number for that? Starting. Yeah. 
It's not gonna just push through, you're probably gonna have to just throw it through. Okay. And it's gonna go from the other side. Of course. That's <laughs> 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 a lot easier. <laughs> 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 Alright, let's see how it goes. Yeah, I'm gonna try to Check my toolbox, there's some larger size drill bits. I tried to look for drill bits actually. I couldn't find it. In the one of the, in the toolbox. I was say we look for a small one, not a big one.
Oh, you know what? That's fine because I have I I have washers that can go around this. To make it okay. This is all right. We use this one. I forgot. They make they make bushings that basically go on either side of the hole, and then when the tightens around it, the end of the box. So this is fine. You have those? Yeah, they're in that plastic bag. Grabbing this more to know when I'm going to need them somewhere. You go not you, there's a punch out and you do the punch out and there's a ring in the middle and a bigger ring and yep. then you punch it and you just mean to do the middle ring and the whole thing comes out but well, use these okay or the whole like I could use the one inch hole saw and then use these fucking things and what it does twenty minutes ago. So the lip goes towards the inside towards each other, one on the outside and one on the inside. And then just clean up this hole. Make it like that hole was made for this thing. And then we put special wrenches for that. I this in my truck. There, and then, we've got this little flip guy, right? I didn't show you earlier. So this is a bushing, and it just keeps stuff from rubbing on the edge of that, and that, and getting. There we go. That's good. So now we take our dryer kind of switch. Dryer first. There we go. Funny. The 
cable that I bought for these is small enough for this to grip, but the film I used that leftover is not. It's a little too big. Let me see if I really crank it down. No, it's too skinny. But, you know, if I knot it, it'll be just fine. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I never said it doesn't work, for sure. <laughs> All right, so if you two want to work on uh, routing this and getting it uh, through the gland, yep. and then uh, and then hooking it up to input number two, which is this little part right here. Um, can use my technician screwdriver. I'll get this side. Of the It's 22. No, so wrong. Original yeah. free wire. Oh, it's the same. It's just, oh, 18. Yeah. Sucker back in. So, what's what's left of the fuser? I guess I should take the ladder out of the room, huh? <laughs>
progress? Yep, looks good. Now we just gotta tighten this clamp down. Okay. Spray down really well every evening when you get home for a week and work it back and forth. Uh, after like wait like 20 minutes or, or yeah, so spray it down like at your last job and then when you get home work it back and forth, open fully open fully closed for five minutes or so, and then uh, after a week it'll be like brand new. It won't be like brand new because you, there's obviously there's gonna be gears and stuff that are a little stripped, but it'll be way better. <laughs> Uh, well, it's fun opening it. Need it to close. It stops closing. <laughs> there. Well, yeah, we had too long. It's done. There's something in there? No, that's just it should be. Yeah, it's all done. DWD 40 got another one. Compressor, 
fan and filter. So let's get over the shoulder here. Get this locked up. So Clear Comfort uh, white box was open over there. You didn't have to do anything else, right? No. Okay. Attach the AUI cover if you'd like. I'll walk you through it. Sit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just the six screws? Yep. The six screws should be sitting in the face plate. They are. Yep. And uh, the ribbon cable will show you how to connect it. Oh, okay. Super easy. Super easy. Super, super Chris easy. can grab the camera and move it to where. Video. Did you say grab the camera? I was done. Chris can grab the camera. Okay. Fine. And, and point it, uh, just put it over Hector's shoulder so that it's showing while he does the UI. So first thing is I'd get the screws out of there because they're going to all fall out when you're trying Got to it. do it. Kevin, you watch a lot of TV when you were younger? And, uh, uh, I don't know what a lot is. There was a show called Sliders. It's like pretty crappy now, but I thought it was pretty cool. Oh, I think I remember it, but I didn't watch it. Gotcha. All right, we're at the ribbon. Okay, so you make sure that this is loose. You can see it's, it's a little loose, right? You get it loose just by pulling it out just very gently. Okay. So it's loose, and now you can stick the ribbon cable in. Got it. It's in. Slide it in, yeah. Nope. Oh. It takes a little practice, but once you once you learn how to do it, it's really easy. So mm -hmm. you got it there, and then you just push in the little clip, make sure it's all the way in. 
I'll wiggle it. Mm, nope. Okay. Got loose again. So we're just gonna aim for that slot, and it, you won't feel a clip or a, a, a plug or anything. It's just gonna slide in until it stops sliding. There you go. I can't push it in front. Yeah, and then I push the cover, but it's it's not, it doesn't retain it very well. It just keeps it from falling out. Oh. So you can't pull on it. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so now stick your cover back where it goes. Cool. And start a screw. Got it. Screw, screw, screw. Screw, screw, screw. Easy, huh? Yeah, easy enough. <laughs> all of us, huh? Mm -hmm. I hope I ran away by the time it bites the two of you. <laughs> well, that's why I think it's gonna bite you first. <laughs> Gotta be calm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I was dead before it, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so out there you should see a box that has the uh, a, a ceramic disc and a little like PVC assembly. Yep. I'm going to plug this hole for you real quick. Uh, All right, so uh, the disc comes out of there. Mm -hmm. Do you need this? Uh, yep. The disc is going to go, this, this, this screws into the center of it. Still sealed. Yeah, they... Present. One thing I've seen for Clear Comfort is, they package everything securely. <laughs> yeah, they, the container is the whole... Ah, okay. The disc. The ceramic disc. Also, oh, this one is in the. Do I know where this goes? No. <laughs> so confused right now. <laughs> okay, so check it out. There's some instructions here. Okay, and. See here, diffuser. So there's an angled. Take the get out of the way, the camera. I'll show the camera too. Oh shoot! So there is a angled T coming off that assembly at, at one side, and there is a straight one up in the middle. So the diffuser, uh, no Teflon tape needed. Or there's some on there, I guess. Naturally, that's just to. It's not to keep it from leaking. It's to. Well, maybe I guess, but mo mostly to lubricate it so that it, it slight goes in and well. So the disc is going to screw onto that, and then there is a fitting in his bag it's going to go in here okay and then that hose is going to connect to the end of this and you've got a hose clamp on there did you do this on the last one uh the other one has a diffuser rod that goes in the pipe this one got goes it. down the bottom of the pit okay so uh, if you guys want to assemble that i will finish getting this part together and why did you uh do it in the pipe over there as opposed to here they don't have a pit but so it's better to do it in the pit um it is it depends. Um, what's the right way to answer that? Uh, it's easier to do it in the pit and just as effective. Uh, it is more expensive to do it in the pit than in the pipe. Uh, but in the pipe, it is more frustrating and maybe uh, you're under. Um, you can collect. So if you do it in the pit, the gas 
gases off. Whereas if you do in the pipe, the gas gases off in the pool. So you have bubbles going out in the pool and some people don't like that. That's probably really the main difference. Got it. It's not the only difference, like I said. But like that other one, you know, it took us three hours to do, including the AUI install. Probably more. Uh, well, I'm saying not including like having to go to the store and not knowing where we were mounting stuff and all that, right? Yeah. Once we once we decided where the units were going, it happened pretty quick, you know? Okay. Um, whereas this one, you can check the camera, but we, it's been less than an hour and we're basically done. Yeah, really. I want to do more of these though. <laughs> yeah. This is the same for regular install. You have good pumping and you have a bad one. Yeah. in the PVC assembly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yep. That's nice and super easy. Alright, and then we're going to use this clamp to attach the white tubing. I see this thing has two ring clamp so just one on each end uh yes instead of that plastic clamp that the instructions say to use uh right because we're since we're pressurizing it with the compressor so. got it hey you guys working look no lights no flow no current hmm. and we are coming up on one hour and we're about to drop that in the pits we'll be basically done we are i mean we are done once we drop it in the pit and we connect it to the canister we're Freaking done with this thing. I have a flathead um, in the, my top drawer. And how much do you got one? Here. Hey, Sorry. We won't wait. We won't wait. Just put it on right now. Just crossed the one hour mark. So, do you want these all the way on the bottom or a little off the bottom? Off. And they just need to be snug. They don't need to be like cranked down. I'm assuming you'd want a little more snug so it won't fall off, right? I don't know what the snug is. Oh, well, that's good. Because I don't want to. So that's this kind of thing that's going to be holding it into the pit, though. Yeah. <laughs> that long. Oh, I don't want to go. Oh my god. Because, you know, it's going to get. It's gonna get brittle in like a year or two. Yeah, I'll let you snug it. Well, just, did, like, I mean, yeah. I had it snug, but yeah, yeah, that's good right there. That's yeah, fine. if it, yeah, it just needs to be like I'm, the ho the tubing just needs like if you, yeah, see, it's good. It's just to keep it from backing off. Oh. Yeah. So this doesn't ever have to come out for anything. No, I mean it'll last years and years and years. Yeah, it'll last many years. That's why I was like, well, if you're pulling on it, that might pop off. <laughs> well, you don't wait. You shouldn't be pulling on it, though. Okay, so I guess we just put it in there. Uh, yep. Give me just one second. I'm uh, snapping the picture real quick. What happens if that does pop off in there? <laughs> I guess you could always get it out if you join. Yeah, I mean they go down in their service it. Yeah. I'm so. <laughs> Just to put it where the water enters. Yep. Where the water enters on the return? On the return side, yeah. Yeah. We're good. We're in between where the pump holes are. Yeah. 
<laughs> so Sorry. now we just have to feed this through this opening. Okay, it's in there. Where does that connect to? Oops, super easy. Uh, Why doesn't that one have a side port? Oh, there it is. I was like, well, where's the port at? Oh, there it is. It was protecting the cabinet from the fitting. It wasn't really whether it was a diffuser rod or the surge kit, it was really the, the pump room, pump room layout, the distances, all that stuff. So, we have our AUI um, that's powered on. I'm going to plug in our XPC too. Okay, so, XPC is hooked up. Okay, uh, we need to, if we can get that <laughs> fixed, we need to. The, the tubing is cracked. Yeah. Yep. Um, we have here the AUI powering the compressor uh, and the clear comfort. You want to go get some tubing? Or no? I'm okay. going down into the cockpit. So that is. <laughs> 